Good morning and happy snow day. If you can be happy about a snow day. <laughs> I have set the camera up a little differently so those on the other side of the world can see that we have snow everywhere today. And uh, I'll just make some adjustments here so you can see. In fact, I'll just move over a little bit. That way you can see the big tree in behind with the snow and that. There we go. So those of you in Africa that are watching in Pakistan and and well Nepal, you get lots of snow. So you know what that's all about. And Myanmar and uh, down in Thai, uh, Thailand, you know, you have all got snow or don't have snow. So we're just trying to, you know, I'm just trying to adjust the camera a little bit. There we go. And so that's what it looks like for those the rest of you around the world. So glad that you've joined us with another Discipleship Empowerment Word. We're talking about the word give and giving, and we're relating it to the story of Joseph, how God has given to him and continues to give. Thank you for all of you people that wave. Good morning to you. I'm probably having a snowed-in day, so enjoy it. <laughs> Can I tell you, those of you who will be watching on the other side of the world, we have a snow in days or snow day like and if it's a storm we're in the midst of a storm right now it's pretty blowing and so some roads get closed uh, we close our schools because the schools the kids get picked up by the buses and the buses can't go and get the kids so the schools get closed and all kinds of things take place and we have snow then people don't know how to drive anymore and there's all kinds of accidents and so you people in Africa, I was talking to our pastor Ezekiel over in Africa, and he said he would, they were struggling around 30 Celsius with the heat down there, and it was pretty dry. So, uh, Ezekiel, this is what it looks like over in our part of the world right now. So, God bless you all as we continue to look into God's Word. We're looking at the life of Joseph, and yesterday we were talking about how how the Lord was has a plan for Joseph's life, even though the plan is all negative. Uh, I I wanna I wanna stress that, and I'm gonna stress it today again, because I I've titled today's message, uh, "Given a Ministry." That Joseph was given a ministry, even where he was, and even whatever situation he is finds himself in. He seems to rise above the challenges and is able to minister to people and be a blessed by God and be a blessing to people. I think that's something that we need to see even today, that God is giving us opportunities. Amen. And God gave Joseph opportunities, even though he was uh, sold as a slave, even though he was in um, uh, Potiphar's household and we're going to see a little bit later he not only has to be sold as a slave and work there but because of uh, events and circumstances he ends up in the king's prison or the pharaoh's prison and again he's he's put in charge of all kinds of things and we're going to see a lot too this phrase in the next couple of days i don't think we're going to get through it all today uh, but in chapter 39 of Genesis, you see this kind of statement where, where the Lord was with Joseph. The Lord was with Joseph. And so even though you may be experiencing snow today and can't get out and do certain things, the Lord is with you. Amen. And I need to remember that too. <laughs> I hope you understand that a lot of things that we teach in the morning, we're working through too. We're not experts in all this thing, but... Colin and I, and especially me, we're working these things through too. And so, you know, trying to understand the Lord's will is not easy. And I think that's why we need to look at the uh, life of Joseph in a little bit more detail than we would normally do in a word study. And to see how the hand of God was giving to Joseph. So I, I want to remind you again today that the title of our teaching today is Given a Ministry. And most people would not title this section of giving and ministry. Most people would say, this is horrible. This, what goes on to Joseph is challenging. Why? You know, how can you say giving a ministry? 
Well, whether you're in, we're going to see in prison or a slave or in captivity or wherever it is, we can be blessed of the Lord and be a blessing for the Lord. Amen. And that's what we need to grab hold of today. So let's go on over into chapter 39 and look at what's happening in Joseph. We know he's been sold. And we know uh, where he has been taken. And the Midianites sold him uh, to Potiphar. And it's important that we understand that who Potiphar is. See, remember we were talking about the hand of God getting Joseph into places that would lead to other places because he eventually has to fulfill the Abraham, his part of the Abraham covenant. See, we all got a ministry and we all got a responsibility when it comes to the kingdom of heaven. If not, why why would God save us other than he has a purpose for us? One, to be with him in eternity and two, to walk together and fellowship him and, and with him and serve, right? And so that's what it's all about. So let's look at verse 1. We get some uh, historical information and some details behind and where it says now joseph had been taken down to egypt and potiphar an officer of pharaoh's captain of the guard and an egyptian bought him from the ishmaelites who had taken him down there so they're up in the canaan land and he gets sold from being in the dry well to the ishmaelites or the midianites sometimes they say there is a similarity or depending on the group of people that were traveling together. And he gets there and Potiphar is in the slave buying business. And I guess he needed a slave for his home. We think here that, oh, he's just buying Joseph, but he is buying him. And Joseph needs to be responsible as a slave. So he ends up in this high official he he Potiphar is way up and he's in charge of the the the, the uh, garrison or the captain of the guard to Pharaoh so remember we need to see the Lord's hand where where God has got to get Joseph in a place where he can then uh, have the power and the authority to bring his family into Egypt during the family or during the famine and then be there for 400 years so that that family that has increased to a million people or more would head back to Cana as a nation. So that's that's the, the big picture, you know what I mean, the thing that's going on. And I think when we look at the, the Joseph, we forget about that and we forget about that when it comes to the Lord Jesus Christ. There was a timeline. He, at the fullness of time, Christ had to come. At the fullness of time. That's why with Jesus, when you look at this, the, the account of Jesus, the word time is often used. Even when his mother came to him at the, at the wedding feast of Cana, you know, and said to her, her son, you know, we've run out of wine. And, and Jesus says back to her, but woman, it's not my time yet. But, you know, mothers, they have power and authority. <laughs> and so he goes and turns, you know, the water into wine. The beginning of his ministry was turning water into wine. And it's and it's interesting that that all the things that Christ walked out had to happen at the fullness of time. It wouldn't have the meaning if it happened at different times. If Christ was crucified any time other than the Passover, it would lose the majority of its meaning. Because the Passover was the, the, the picture under the law, which was the old covenant, and Christ was now going to fulfill it during the Passover by shedding his blood so that he could give us a new covenant. So the timelines are, are so important. And so that's why we need to see the bigger picture about Joseph and the bigger picture about Jesus because there's things going on. And that's why I tell pastors and leaders, even in today's, in our society today, God's timeline is still moving forward. And there's things that will not change. These things will happen. And Jesus even said, and Paul said, and John said, when you see these things, look up for your redemption draw of nine. Now, they all said it in a little different way, but they were telling us that we could, 
we can be assured that when we watch out what Jesus is doing and watch what's happening around the world, we know that we're moving step by step to the coming of the Lord. Well, it's the same thing here with Joseph. You know, he had to be at a certain time put in that dry well, at a certain time that the many nights would go by and buy him, at a certain time that, I mean, why didn't Pontifus buy a slave the week before? Or the week after? Or the day before? Or five hours before? Or someone different? See, God goes around and he intervenes and he works out his plan. We think that the enemy has the final authority when it comes to the plan. Satan does not. He can try to trick us. He can try to talk us into all kinds of things. But we need to hear the plan, the still small voice of the Holy Spirit saying, This is my plan. Arise and walk in it. And so we see here, and it goes on in verse 2. And this is where the first phrase comes. And the Lord was with Joseph. When it comes to understanding ministries and the plan of God, we've got to be walking in the Lord. And we've got to allow the Lord to walk in us. And this whole idea, the Lord was with Joseph. The Lord was with Joseph. And it goes on and it states that a number of times. And even as things got worse for Joseph in our category, where we would say things have got worse, it says more often, and the Lord was with Joseph. Whatever you may be facing or struggling, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, the Lord is with you. We just need to realize that. We need to accept that. And here the author of Genesis is referring to that, and the Lord was with Joseph. Because it goes on, And he was a successful man and was in the house of the master of the Egyptians. So here, he comes out you know, hated by his brothers, where they want to kill him. He's in a dry well. He ends up being sold. He ends up being sold again as a slave. And the Lord is upon him. And not only that, that in the midst of all this challenge, now get this, underline it, circle, whatever you want to do, in the midst of all this, and it's going to get worse, he was successful in the Lord. Isn't that interesting? It uses that word, that Joseph was successful. Well, how do you count successful when you're a slave? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, how do you count, how do you count it successful when you've been sold and, and separated from your family? How do you count that as a success? How do you count that some of the negative things that may go on in your own family or your own children or grandchildren and all that. How can you still say, but in spite of that, the Lord was with us and we have been successful? Do you hear what I'm saying? This is what God is saying about Joseph. And this is what God wants us to understand. That as we walk with Jesus Christ, even though the things of the world, you know, all these plagues and sicknesses and, and struggles that are going on, that we are still in the Lord. And in the Lord, there is success. There is ability to overcome. And that's why I said God give, was given Joseph a ministry. Let's go on. It says in verse 3, And his master saw that the Lord was with him. Here we are again. Now, in verse 2, the Lord was with Joseph. That is said by the author. But now we know that, that uh, uh, Potiphar... He now turns around and he looks at... Now, remember, Potiphar is a worship of all kinds of other gods. They had all kinds of other temples. And they had all kinds of deities like you wouldn't believe. I mean, if you go over to that part of the world, you can see the history of all those deities and demons and ugly things that they worship. Wow, I mean, in the country of Myanmar, I mean, we've got temples and places there that they worship every creepy weird thing under the face of the earth and if there's not they cannot find it they'll make something and worship it and that's where Potiphar was he was in the midst of all of this and he notices that the Lord was with him with Joseph isn't that amazing you know when you're walking in the Lord in the midst of that and I remember that when Irene was in the hospital in St. Boniface, and she only had about, well, sometimes they said a week, two weeks to live. 
But the nurses and the doctors were amazed how the joy of the Lord was with her in the midst of all that pain, all that challenge. And everybody saw it. You know, people came in to minister to her and she ended up ministering to them. And that's why I want to say when you go through all these struggles, it, no matter where you end, if you look around, you will see that the Lord is with you. And then in the midst of your struggles, He will give you success. And not only that, He's going to give you a testimony amongst the people of the world that the Lord is with you. Isn't that amazing? So here's this high official. And this would have been quite a, a astounding statement for him to say because he knew that there was all kinds of other deities and gods and stuff. But he was able to say here that the Lord, and this is the word capitalized Lord, it means Jehovah, was with him. So Potiphar is making a profound statement and testimony about his slave. Did you hear that? Isn't that an amazing thing? That's why we're titling it today. You know, this whole idea is that God had given Joseph a ministry. He goes on, the Lord, and he says here, and it says, The master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hand. So he looked at this guy, and he said, Look, look at this guy. The Lord is with him. And not only is the Lord with them, but it seems like whatever he does, he prospers. That's an amazing thought too, isn't it? God wants to bless. And, and so, you know, we like to grumble and complain. And, and, and I'm, I'm a professional in that area. And uh, I've told you that many times before. You know, I got aches and pains and other things that don't always quite come together. But I need to realize that in the midst of that, God is with me. God is going to use my testimony to bless others. And not only that, that in that blessing, we're all going to prosper. Because whatever Joseph did, he prospered. But the idea of prospered here also shows that he was a blessing to the household that he was living in. So the ble- just his presence of being in the Lord made it possible for, the, for him to be blessed by God, but to be a blessing to others. Isn't that amazing? He goes on, So Joseph found favor in the sight and served him. Then he made him overseer of his house and all that he had to put under his authority. So, here again, Potiphar hires a slave, or buys a slave, I should say, brings him to his house, has him there for a little while and said, hey, there's something unusual about this guy. The Lord God, Jehovah, is with him. And he is blessed of God. He's at peace. He's at, you know, he should have been mourning. You know, I'm a slave. My brother sold me. You know, I miss my mom and dad and all these things. And he's not there. He's realizing, I think, moment by moment, but the hand of God is on him. And to get on top of that, he might only be 18. Remember, he, when he went to see his brothers, he was 17. He could now be 18 or maybe 19 at the most. And so those of you who are younger, realize the hand of God is on you too. You know, the hand of God can be on children. The hand of God can be on young people. The hand of God can be on you. Whatever situation, if you've got a bad home, you've got challenges, you got, you know... Uh, I, I've seen the hand of God in my own life and people would have given up on me if it wasn't for the hand of God and for God showing his blessing and God prospering us as we walked in him. And he saw that. And so what he did, he gave this, this slave the authority of his entire estate. And it was a big one. Can you imagine Think about this. He might be 18, maybe 19. Potiphar's probably in his late 20s or 30s because he's the head of the Pharaoh's guard. So he's got to be older because he's leading all these other men. And he could have picked any soldier from amongst his men and put them in charge. 
but he picks a slave. And he puts him in charge of the entire household. That's our God. Because it often is the people who we least suspect are put in charge. And people get really upset about that. People will say, well, I de deserve that position. I deserve to have that. I deserve to have that wage increase. I, 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 I. Well, God put you where God wants you to be. And wherever he has us to be, we're to be a blessing and a ministry for him. And how do we know that? Because it goes under here on verse 5. After we see that he was an overseer of his whole household. An overseer is like, I don't know if you know the word overseer, but the word overseer and elder are the same words. You know, when you're an elder in the church, you're an overseer. Can you imagine again this young man? And people used to complain. You know, when I started preaching, I was only 18 years old. And the people would say, oh, wait till he's 30. He'll get better then. You know, they always said, wait till you're 30. Wait till you're 35 or whatever. No. I became an overseer of a church when I was 18. I became an overseer of two churches when I was 19. I don't recommend that, but if God puts you in that position and your heart is with the Lord, the Lord will help you to walk it out. To be able to be a blessing not only to Him, that the people would see that the hand of God is on you, but that also you could be a blessing to the people that you're working with. Because look what it goes on in verse 5. So it was from that time that he made him overseer. Here's our word overseer the second time. Of his house and all that he had. So not only of his household, but of all his possessions, everything. Joseph, the slave, was made overseer. Can you see how God had given to Joseph a ministry? What a powerful ministry. And that notice what it says here. It's, I'm going to read it all again, the same verse. So it was from the time that had made him overseer of the house and all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. I want you to see, you can be a blessing to others if you just walk in the Lord. That's what's going on here. It's saying that the Lord had blessed him, and because of the blessing that was on him, he was a blessing, and the blessing of God was upon uh, Potiphar's house. Isn't that an amazing thought? You know, we think a lot of things are just uh, are affecting us. We don't realize that our presence is affecting other. The things that we do are affecting other. We don't know. I had a brother down, he's living down in the States right now. He said, keep teaching every morning because what you're doing is it affecting the spiritual realm, the spiritual things that are going on in heavenly places and in, 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 in this world. He says, keep going on. It doesn't matter who's listening or not listening because when you're walking with the Lord, it affects others. Whether they know it or not. Isn't that an amazing thought? And here is the idea of that right there. That Joseph could have just said, well, I'm going to keep it all to myself. I'm just going to, you know, I'm a servant. I'll do what I'm told. And then after that, it's my time and I'll do whatever I want. No, he served the, he served his Lord as a slave in Potiphar's house where God blessed him and blessed, blessed Potiphar and all his household. The Lord goes on in the Egyptian's home for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in the house and in the field. So, are you getting this picture? This ministry, the, the, the giving of a ministry to Joseph is not only affecting him, it's affecting Potiphar's household. And did you see that last little line there? And it's affecting everything that's in the field. What do you mean by that? Potiphar was getting great crops. His animals were reproducing. Everything was going right because of the slave, Joseph, who walked with the Lord. Don't underestimate what God will and wants to do through you. Amen. Don't underestimate that. Believe that God can use you. And uh, even though you may or may not understand why. You know, there's many things that I've had the opportunity to do and to write. And I think, oh, 
oh man, I don't know if these are going to help anybody or do anything or touch anyone's lives. But you know, every once in a while, you hear a little testimony here and a little testimony there, how God uses us in our weaknesses to glorify his name. What, what is the weakness that you find yourself in? What, what is this thing that you find you're enslaved to? And, you, and it seems like you can't change. Well, trust in the Lord. And as you trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, you will see the blessing of Christ, the spiritual blessing, the emotional blessing, and sometimes even the physical blessing to be poured out on you. And not only on you, but where your ministry is. You know, pastors, you've got to realize you're in a ministry to a community. You're not just in a ministry to a pulpit or, or to a church. You're in a ministry to a community. I, I realize that when I, when I go into a, a little co-op, little brokery store, I need to realize that what I'm doing there, I want to be a blessing for the Lord there. I want to be a blessing for the Lord in our other community of Steinbach. You know, I, I mean, all kinds of people are grumpy and upset about all kinds of things and, you know, all this COVID this and COVID that and all kinds of things. Let me tell you that if in the midst of whatever you find yourself enslaved to or boxed into or cannot do, you can still be a blessing not only to yourself through the Lord Jesus Christ, but you can be a blessing to your family and you can be a blessing to those around about you. You say, how, that, how is that possible? Look at the life of Joseph. <laughs> Look how Joseph was a blessing in the midst of being a slave. If a guy had any reason to be grumpy, it would be Joseph. But Joseph was a blessing to the Lord. He kept the Lord first. And we're going to see tomorrow that as soon as you start to try to be a blessing for the Lord, as soon as you start to try to walk upright before the Lord, the enemy is going to throw in an attack. And Joseph gets attack come upon him by, by somebody very close to Potiphar. But that still doesn't stop Joseph. Because Joseph is part of a bigger picture. That God is moving him along. And wherever he was going to be. Can you imagine? He, you know, Joseph is a blessing as a slave. But we're going to find out tomorrow he even becomes a greater blessing as a prisoner. Now, I mean, we normally would not think that way. <laughs> we would think, you know, like Paul or like others, you know, woes is me as I'm in prison. You know, thank God that Paul spent a lot of time in prison. Why? Because a lot of the books that he wrote to us that we teach from and preach from came from when he was given the ministry of prison work. You understand that? So we need to stop thinking about, you know, how bad it is for us and just start thinking, if I just come into the presence of the Lord, if I just walk in the Lord and his word, I will be blessed because of that. Because there's a blessing to be in the Word of God. There's a blessing to be in prayer. But not only will I be a blessing, I can tell you no matter what kind of a mess your family is in, if you walk in the Lord and the Lord is pouring out His blessing, you will also be a blessing to your household. Whether they want to recognize it, whether they want to believe it or not, you will be a blessing to their household. And not only that, you will be a blessing to the community around you. Are you hearing me? Maybe it's time to stop looking at all the negativity and start being like a Joseph and pray, Lord, help me. You know, help me in my aches and pains. Help me in my snowstorm. Help me, you know, in the things that I'm facing concerning COVID. Help me in the sicknesses that I'm walking in. Whatever it may be, when we call on the name of the Lord, He is with us. And our Lord God, because we are his children, wants to bless us. But because we're his children, he wants to bless our family and he wants to bless those around us. We need to get the bigger picture that God is giving us a ministry. And I don't care how old you are. You know, I was 
starting to get in, well, it may be time to retire, maybe it's time to stop and that, and people kept reminding me, yeah, but do you remember Abraham just got started when he was 100? So I'm not very close to that at all, so I'm hoping that I can just get started even more when I'm 100. But the thing is, I want to be a blessing to my street. I want to be a blessing to people who come on this property. I want to be a blessing wherever I go. And the thing is that I need to keep focus on is not the things that are going on around about me that can even that look like a, 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 a real bondage, but to realize that in Christ, no whether I'm a slave or I'm in prison or whatever I may be going through, I'm free in Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that you gave ministry, uh, ministry to Joseph, the Lord, that, and you ordained his journey. You ordained his position that he was to, going to be in. And Lord, you helped to show that the Lord was on him. And not only that, you showed his boss that the Lord was on him. And you showed everybody in the household that the Lord was on him. And so, Father, we thank you for the life of Joseph, and we pray, O oh God, that it's an example to us that how we should walk in the midst of our struggles and trials. And so, Lord, I thank you for this opportunity to share today how you give to each of us a ministry, and all that we have to do is to rise up and walk in you. And we thank you now, in Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Well, are you excited about that? I hope you are. It blesses me. I'm so glad that I can hear myself talk. <laughs> because after every day I'm finishing, I have to a lot of times pray and say, Lord, wow, you know, I, I need to get that in my life too. To realize that you've got a bigger picture. A much, much bigger picture. And that we just need to get in tune to what the Holy Spirit wants to say to us and do through us amen well keep on keeping on in the lord and lord willing we'll pick up the story tomorrow because the blessing of joseph is going to go through some more challenges amen and we need to say okay lord how can we also face the challenges that we face and still glorify you so we love you now lord willing we'll see you tomorrow bye-bye and enjoy the snow okay <laughs> bye-bye